Hey, welcome back to Mechanical Pros. Today we're going to talk about how to chemically clean this heat exchanger in a water source heat pump. So as we've talked about previously in videos, we have water in these copper pipes. You can see the copper there. There's water inside this pipe runs through this steel jacketed heat exchanger. And what's happening is in between the steel jacket and the outside of this copper pipe, we've got refrigerant flowing through there. And what can happen to you sometimes is the inside of this copper pipe can get scaled up with some sort of debris or trash. It kind of sticks to it and it just won't release it. And when it does that, it affects our heat transfer between the water in this pipe and the refrigerant surrounding the pipe in this steel jacket. So what we're going to talk about today is I've checked my strainer, I've cleaned that, I've back flushed my condenser coil here. I've back flushed my heat exchanger here by reversing the water flow and cleaned all the trash out that may be stuck inside the pipe. But in this circumstance, I've got scale built up and just clinging to the inside of that pipe. And no matter what I do with reversing water flow, I can't break that trash out of there and it's affecting my heat transfer or heat absorption depending on my mode of operation of refrigerant to water. So what we have here is a basic little transfer pump, maybe quarter horsepower or something. You might use this to move water from a 55 gallon drum to another 50. Maybe you're putting glycol in a chill or something like that. It's, it's not a big pump. Now, if we were in a larger application, maybe we were doing a brace plate heat exchanger in a big chiller, we'd probably want a bigger pump. But for this, this is all we need, this little guy here. So what we're doing is we've got our tank of water over here and we've added a chemical to that tank of water. So what that chemical is going to do is over time, as we continue to circulate water, we valved off the water supply from our system loop, and we've now connected our hoses to our water loop. So we've got the, the pipes that would come in and typically feed water from our building loop. We've disconnected those, and now we have connected our own hoses to our tank of water over here, which is using our circulating pump. So what we'll do with that water is we will add a, a cleaner to it. Um, there's several different kinds out there on the market. What we like to use are two different types. We use a product called Ridline that is very environmentally friendly. You can dump it right down the drain. It's not a big deal. It's a very good product for the specific application. If my shell right here around my copper tube isn't terribly scaled up, then I might use a Ridline product. I know this building is 30 years old, the water quality is terrible, they haven't been treating the water, then I might go more to a descaler that you might use to clean centrifugal chiller barrels on the condenser side, something that's really going to break that down quickly where you're not running your pump all day. So a couple different options. Be aware of the precautions on the labels. Follow those directions to the T. You always want to use your proper PPE when you're running a chemical across this. Maybe as simple as safety glasses, but depending on what you're using, how corrosive it might be, you may need to go full face shield, rubber gloves. Demonstration we're using today, I've only got water in the tank. I'm not adding my chemicals to it but you would not want to do just straight water. You would want to add some sort of a chemical that's going to break down whatever scale is built up on the inside of this copper tubing that is preventing that heat transfer. Okay, so our first step in this process, we've determined the devices we're going to use. We have a tank that we're hooked up with our hoses. Now you're going to need some sort of a filter that's as you circulate our water through there, that's gonna catch all this trash and debris so we're not just putting it right back in the heat exchanger. So this particular little setup we've got, it's got a little filter on it. So we're pulling water out of the tank on this blue hose here, and these work great. These little washer and dryer hoses, they, they're really good for this setup. We're pulling it out of the tank, and in that tank we have our water and chemical mixture. Now you read the label on your chemical, it's gonna tell you how much chemical to add per how many gallons of water. Make sure you get that right. So we got our water discharging our pump. Our water and our chemical mixture is coming out through here. First it hits our inlet side of our hose and the units should always be labeled. What is the inlet side? What is the outlet side? Another good way to know what is your inlet side, the strainer should always be on the inlet side so it picks up the trash as it goes through. But for this procedure, since we're trying to flush it all back into our tank, which already has a filter on it, I don't want to restrict the process. I'm going to pull that strainer out while I'm doing this work. 
pulled the strainer out, put it all back together. So we've got our chemical and our water pumping through here. And as it flows through here, over time, it's gonna, that chemical is gonna break down any scale and debris that is on the inside of this copper pipe. What's happening is that restricts the heat transfer across this copper to the refrigerant that's inside of this steel jacket. So if we've got a bunch of scale, and you chiller guys out there will know with your condenser barrels, if you've got a bunch of scale on the inside of this copper pipe, it will not allow that heat transfer. And that's all we're doing. So we've got our chemical in there. We've turned our pump on. We're letting this guy flow across. It goes through the coil. Then it leaves the coil. This is a circuit setter. It's not gonna restrict any flow. There's no need to make any changes here. You really don't wanna change the setting on this circuit setter because it changes the volume of water that goes across there. That should have already been preset if it's ordered specifically for the tonnage of water source heat pump. You don't ever wanna to touch it. It's already factory set. As it leaves here, it goes right back to my tank that's got all my chemical in it along with my filter. It goes through the filter, the filter picks up the trash, it, then it returns back, comes right back on this guy through the pump, and you just repeat that process until eventually you don't start seeing trash coming out into your tank of water over there. You won't be watching that tank of water. If it's a really dirty system, you may need to dump that and refill with clean water and clean chemical and run it again. You will know within a couple minutes of running this and looking in that tank of water what you're getting out and know if you're doing any good or not. Again, when you get your service call and the service call is the unit's not running, you come up to your printed circuit board, you look at the LED diagnosis and in the heating mode, if it's giving you a low pressure or low temperature, it's something with this. If it's in the cooling mode and it's a high head pressure issue, it's something going on here. Now, it could always be a dirty strainer. You always want to check that first and just make sure your strainer's not clean. And then go ahead and back flush your coil, which we've talked about on a previous video. But if you've done that and you're still having the problem, best way to troubleshoot is in the cooling mode for sure. If you're still having high head pressure faults, we know we have the right volume of water going, but it's still tripping, then the inside of this copper pipe has gotten scaled up and you're no longer transferring that heat over to the water. And that's what we're talking about doing. So I'm gonna turn this little pump on, just do a brief demonstration. You know, you're not gonna be able to see much, but water's flowing through here. So a little noisy, we'll turn this guy on. A little noisy, make sure your customer's aware of that. And we're just circulating a cleaner through there. Now when you're done with this whole process, we have to get that chemical out of that heat exchanger. So what you're gonna to have to do now is dispose of that water and chemical in an appropriate way, depending on what sort of chemical you use. The label on the chemical will tell you how to dispose of it. You need to get rid of that. Now we need to fill this tank full of just clean water. And then you wanna run the pump another five or 10 minutes because we don't wanna leave any chemical in that piping, right? We wanna flush it all, get it all out of there. Once you do that, the big tell is going to be when you look in your tank of water. If you see a bunch of trash in there, you know you're doing work. If it's spotless clean, you may have misdiagnosed it. That might have been not what the problem is. Well, there we go, everyone. Thanks for watching Mechanical Pros today and how to chemically clean a heat exchanger on a water source heat pump. It's very basic, not a lot to it, but it's something you need to learn how to do. Be sure to comment on the video if you've got any questions or any other topics you'd like us to discuss. Just let us know, it'll make it happen. And we'll see you next time on Mechanical Pros.